Hello there, my fellow Cossack-inspired fantasy folk, and welcome back to another lore video on the rich world of Warhammer Fantasy. So, with one video on the realm of Kislev already under our belt, I thought that this time we could tackle an entirely different topic on the same faction. Since we already talked about the region and the climate of Kislev itself, today we're gonna talk about their government and leadership. I am your host, Boyar GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The ruling government of Kislev is usually defined by a centralized autocratic monarchy, governed by hereditary rulers known as Tsars. The Tsar, or Tsarina of Kislev, is a powerful figure, claiming to be the direct descendant of Mishka, or Miska, the first Khan Queen of the ancient Gospodar people. At least in theory, the Tsar has absolute power within the kingdom, for they are considered both the spiritual and political rulers of the land and its people. The Tsar has the power to issue edicts, create laws, command armies, and gain the fealty of all the subjects living in the lands of Kislev. In reality, however, the people of Kislev are far more autonomous than anyone would give them credit for. The land of Kislev is a mostly empty country, with vast tracts of land separating what meager settlements still remain untouched by warfare. These great distances make governing almost impossible, and as a result the settlements have become highly independent from the ruling of the Tsars themselves. The inhabitants of these towns and villages still recognize that they are the subjects of the Ice Queen, but they would be surprised indeed to learn that the Tsar expects them to do what they demand. Instead, each settlement is governed at a local level, usually by a village chief or an elder. Since the very founding of the kingdom, it was the sole responsibility of the Tsar to lead and defend their people from all forms of harm. As such, the issue of warfare is considered paramount within the political landscape of the Kislevite government. The threat posed from the northern waste is very real and imminent, and as such, all the leaders are assessed in the terms of how can they best defend their people from outside threat. Often this means that the peasants put up with brand new taxes, rather than risk the weakening of their own defenses. But it can also lead up to nobility withdrawing unpopular taxes, as discontent among the common folk makes them far less effective warriors. This political climate ensures a mutual dependence on cooperation between the various political factions. The heart of Kislevite government lies in the Tsarina's enchanted palace of ice, located at the very heart of the city of Kislev. Its walls, ceilings and floors are constructed of magically fashioned ice, formed by the powers of Tsarina Katarin herself. It is from here that the Ice Queen governs the realm through her agents and generals, rather than from the front line like her predecessor. This, however, doesn't mean that she doesn't care for the kingdom. Indeed, this only reflects the personality of the Ice Queen, as Katarin is a stern but caring ruler, whose drive is to simply improve the power of her realm against those seeking to topple it. One such drive is her attempt to cement a centralized authority. She has declared she is the source of law and justice. Thus, any attempt to make or even enforce a law is a criminal act, unless the person in question is authorized by the Tsarina or one of her representatives. To enforce this new law, Katarin uses the ruthless efficiency of the Czechist, which are the Tsarina's secret police. The Czechist are the eyes, the ears, and the sword of the Tsarina's rule. Should one of the Tsarina's subjects break or abuse the law, they are often taken into custody by the Czechist. Loyalty and efficiency are the hallmarks of this organization, and although they may arrest and torture innocent people from time to time, they have rarely convicted or executed any of the wrong individuals. Below the Tsarina's rule are a myriad of nobles with a variety of titles. However, the nobles with real actual power and significance in Kislev are divided between two main titles. The Druzina or Druzina are the lowest rank within Kislevite nobility, a title that is generally given to the leaders of a village or a Kislevite settlement. 
The rank of Druzina is a traditionally hereditary title, but the Ice Queen has been known to use the title as a reward for those individuals who publicly affirm and support her authority. Above the Druzina is the middle rank noble known as the Boyar. Across most of Kislev, the Boyars are the most powerful individuals in the land, for they can hold fealty of a great number of settlements and other Druzina nobles under their rule. Due to the lack of centralized government, the local power each boyar holds is very influential indeed. In the presence of the Tsarina, there are certain rules that must be followed. Ensuring proper etiquette are the Tsarina's palace gods, dangerous men of peerless skill at arms, and the resilience that rivals even that of the dwarves. While the rules of court are strictly enforced, Katarin keeps them simple. And because she always addresses for the impact, the rules make it difficult to spend any time at court without subconsciously forming the idea that the Tsarina is the center of the world. Thus, the main rules of the court are No one may turn his back on the Tsarina, which means you gotta back away from her. She almost leaves the room immediately after finishing a meeting though, so people can leave easily. No one may sit in the Tsarina's presence. Katarin has granted personal exception to this rule to a few valuable or influential individuals who have trouble standing for longer periods of time. No one may stand behind the Tsarina. This rule is interpreted to mean that everyone within the room must be within the field of view of the Tsarina, and is only strictly enforced when she is seated. She normally stands for a few moments at the throne, giving people the time to move into view. No one's head may be higher than that of the Tsarina. Fortunately, she is a tall woman, and her throne is always raised on a high platform. The people do have to bow when she enters a room, though. Nobody below the rank of boyar may speak directly to the Ice Queen, and even the boyars may only speak to her when invited to do so. Of course, the bodyguards of Katarin are exempt from all these rules, so they can properly do their jobs and they always enter the room before her, both to check for threats and to warn the courtiers that the Tsarina is about to arrive. Throughout most of the Kislevite realm, the settlements called Stanitsas are ruled by individuals known as Atamans. The Ataman discharges nearly all the functions of government, enforcing the law, settling disputes, and setting priorities for the settlement they currently rule. An Ataman has almost unlimited authority within his own settlement. There are few with the power to properly contradict them, and even those who have this power are normally too far away to have any effect on the day-to-day -day affairs. Despite this, few Atamans ever turn into tyrants. In most cases, the wise women and the priests of the gods provide a counterweight. The Tsarina claims that all the Atamans are appointed by her and serve at her pleasure. In practice, Atamans reach their office through a variety of traditional routes, and the Tsarina simply issues proclamations appointing all the current Atamans. In many of the Gospodar Stanitsas, the Atamans' position is hereditary in a noble family, although the details of the inheritance may vary. Matrilineal inheritance is common, although female Atamans, called Atamanka, are a bit rarer and make up only about a quarter of the total number of Atamans. In other places, elections are used instead to decide who becomes the newest Ataman. In many border Stanitsas, the best war leader becomes the Ataman himself. And these Atamans have almost invariably served as Rota Master, but it is quite common for them to abandon the role to concentrate on more strategic matters. The Rota Master is a name for a local military leader. Other settlements retain the old traditions of having rival candidates duel for the position. Most of the duels are only to the first blood, but rumors persist of at least one isolated settlement in the north that still imposes fights to the death. Other contests are also possible. One bizarre stanitsa in the east requires the candidate to wrestle a bear, in tribute to Ursun, of course. Another one in the southwest holds a singing contest. Even the villagers in this area themselves, though, know that this custom is rather bizarre. The Tsarina knows that her proclamations are mere formalities, but for now, that is enough. 
Once the people come to accept the formality as necessary for someone to become an Ataman, she will have more power to genuinely control the appointments. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the government and rules of the court from the realm of Kislev and its icy Tsarina for today. What are your thoughts on this kind of etiquette? Do you think the nobility of Kislev is better or worse than the one in the Empire? As always, do feel free to share any thoughts, opinions or questions you might have on the topic in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. May the blessings of Ursun be upon you.